Terrible do not play. Let's go. Dude, we saw you come up with a new meta after no patch for six months in Gwent. We believe you when you say the meta isn't soft. <laughs> well, some of you guys saw that. Is Balance Changes next week? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this is Brom Vlad. Uh, theoretically, a fairly favorable matchup. In this deck, it's uh, customary to mulligan everything that's not a unit. As much as you want it... So this deck, you can actually play very fancy. There's a lot of like very, very funny and smart plays you can do. It feels great playing the deck, because not only is it like gimmicky, but you also do have to think on your feet. In terms of the mulligan, though, it's the easiest mulligan ever. Kick anything that's not a unit. It's, it really is that easy. So, this is where it all begins. With one little fizz. Casually smacking the Nexus. Oh god, he's not going to try anything. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> Come on, man. I've got mana up. So what you can do is sometimes you can bait out a response by tapping under with Warning Shot. Usually it's not really necessary. This is a pretty good draw. Uh, you know, I mean, the games where this deck doesn't draw a single Starlet Seer are basically really sad games. Okay, so we do want to get a couple of buffs on the board. It's a little bit early to do a lot of the Elixir of Iron stuff. We don't want to end treat yet. So there's actually a few weird plays here. Let's think about how this game's going to play out. We do eventually want to sacrifice this Fizz, because we're going to get a bigger Fizz off of the Starless here entry. And again, both Fizzes can't exist on the board at the same time, right? So we will eventually sacrifice the Fizz out, but it's a little early to do that. And we will want to aggressively be spamming spells early, but it's also a little too early to do that. That's a very weird elixir. I don't understand why you would use that there. So, because of all that, we are not really going to be looking to be pressing buttons right now. We could be doing a preemptive warning shot just to get the buff earlier, but we'd rather keep it a bit more flexible. So she's at full health next round. Yeah, but what is he playing around? Noxian Guillotine? We're going to move in a little bit more aggressively. We're pretty close to the point where our where we will be trading down our Fizz. But let's start by buttering him up a little bit. We want our second Fizz to basically put him into one-shot range. So this is a fine, just like, smack him down to 12 for free kind of play. We are, of course, outside of the range of Brittle Steel, which would be, if he has a Freeze, the only Freeze he has. And he'll have no counter to this. And we're pretty close to the point of being able to trade down our Fizz. We do want it to grow by that point, though. So, uh, if we can play five more spells. It's going to be pretty hard this turn. We might have wanted to pick a card if we were going to do that. Okay, this is perfect. This is perfect. So he'll threaten the Fizz here, and that's great. I think we actually almost certainly want the Fizz to be dying. It could make our top deck potentially a bit awkward, but this should be good for us. Okay, he's threatening the Seer, which is smart of him. That is what he should be doing. So now, we have the very interesting board state. So, like I said, we want the Fizz to level up, and we want the Fizz to die. We want to play a bunch of spells here such that our Fizz does level up, so that we can take a block for value. And we do actually have the ability to do that. So we're going to go Elixir of Iron on Starless Seer. We're going to use Warning Shot here to buff something else again. We're going to use Pick a Card on Make It Rain. This is going to take our Fizz to a total of four. Then we're going to use Elixir of Iron on this again. This is going to buff again and take our Fizz to a total of five. Then we're going to use Entreat. This will draw... It could be a really big buffed Fizz, uh, but even if it's not, we're still good anyway. And it'll level both Fizzes. And now we've got the buffed Fizz in our hand that we need to be able to play. We've got the Fizz on board that can now trade into the opponent, which is really nice. He'll play a trick, but that's fine, I don't care. And our Fizz will die, allowing us to play then the really big buffed Fizz, and we're about to draw four cards next turn. And that is the true power of this deck. Like I said, it is a meme deck, but this is like the most fun meme deck I've ever played. I love, I love this deck. So, if we would like, we can play our Fizz out this turn, 
Since he's on two mana, there's not going to be any downside to this. We don't need to protect it from anything. Let's go ahead and slam it. Make him see what he's uh, what he's about to succumb to. And we'll take our big draw. Now, there's a decent amount we can do with this big draw. I mean, the Fizz doesn't need, like, too much to be good here. So, as always, the question is, are we afraid of, like, slow speed options? And the answer is, like, no, not really. I mean, we'll just kind of, like, parlay face and slap him, right? I don't think there's really anything to be afraid of. Like, his deck doesn't really have reactive potential. He's not running the Sejuani version. If he was, then yeah, of course we would open attack. But apart from Sejuani, there's nothing that really inclines us to take an open attack here. And now, what we can do is we can Shared Spoils. Now, this will likely draw us a second Third Seer. We've got a 67% chance to hit this. Which, you know, we could play out here. I don't think there's... Eh, it's definitely better to take the pick a card. It's not like it really matters. So, you know, we're swinging our dick here. Unfortunately, we can't kill him on turn 6. I would have liked to have been able to kill him on turn 6. That's fine that we whiffed it. And if we do want to play, like, somewhat protective of our game plan, it is probably, like, slightly safer to play the Seer over the pick a card. Because, like, his scare card does become, like, Vlad at this point in time. And we do need to make sure we're, like, able to survive an extra turn. Very sad that we didn't have enough damage. If we had drawn, like, a Furry of the North, or like, slightly more damage off of something like, um, you know, like the extra parlay. We're very close to having Lethal there. If we had one more mana, um, you can do Shared Spoil- If you- if you Shared Spoils, and you hit the third Fizz, then you can do a double attack, he blocks the Seer, and then you re-, re uh, rally for the Fizz double attack, that's another way of hitting Lethal. So, we unfortunately weren't able to hit our Lethal this turn, very sad. But, I mean, he would need a pretty good ass pull to win here. It's not impossible though. He actually does have chances of lethal. Uh oh, we lost. <laughs> One Vlad Braum. It's a little hard to run Fervor here. We're only drawing one card though. So basically, if I pocket aces right now, I play around Fervor. There's no way to take less damage here. This is actually so trolly. I probably can't play around Fervor. Can I? Can't I play around Fervor? If we play around Fervor, we lose if we're about to draw any unit. But our entire deck is spells. You need a burst spell? I think we just need any spells. I think... I, I think we actually pocket aces here. I think we do. One mana, just let it go. Well, he doesn't have one mana, he's got nine. I mean, if his card is decimate, he's got one mana. But... I don't think his card is Decimate. <sighs> okay. So, it didn't end up mattering. Obviously, the Pocket Aces there doesn't save us versus the Blade's Edge. It kind of might look like it does, but that wasn't, you know, anything in our range. Basically, what we're making there, it's a bet, right? It's, so it's an easy 50-50, win or loss. This is an easy one to calculate. So the bet is, are we about to draw a unit, or is he about to have Fervor in his deck? Fervor is the only card that rewards what we just did. The only one, right? That's sort of a weird conceit, actually. Um, it doesn't matter. Because, of course, if he had Blade's Edge, which he did, then we pass in that spot, he blades, and then we pocket aces, and it ends up the same. So it's not its not the same spot. It, the, the, the pocket aces there doesn't win against uh, Blade's Edge, right? You have to think in that way. We have a pretty free win, unless we draw literally the third Starless here. So by doing that, I'm basically saying that the odds of me drawing the third Starless here... Because even, even the third Fizz wins there, right? Even the third Fizz wins, because I can attack and then rally off the block and then re-attack with Elusive. Even that wins. But what loses is the third Starless here off the top, which is very, very low odds. It's about 
right? So there's a 4% chance that we lose the game there by doing the play we made. And then all we have to ask ourselves is, is the odds of him having fervor higher than 4%? I think the answer to that is yes. It's not very fucking high, but I think it's higher than 4%. So we make the play we did.